What exactly does success look like for the Oakland Ballers and the Pioneer League? We have these two very different entities coming together to see if they can make independent baseball work in Northern California. The issue, at least as it relates to the Ballers though, is I'm not sure we know what their co-founders want in terms of success. It's a curious case to say the least. We should also not forget the YOLO high wheelers out there in Davis who have an integral role in all of this as well. What happens in Oakland and Davis? This has all of the trappings of a rebound relationship, something where the idea seems a lot better than the reality which ends up unfolding. However, I am no expert on independent baseball. That is why I enlisted the help of Indie Ball Nation to add some much needed perspective on what we could potentially see with the Ballers and the Pioneer League. I highly recommend checking out his YouTube channel if you want to know more about all things independent baseball in America related. It's some great content. You can find the details right there or linked in the video description of this video. But for me, Indie Ball Nation, he is the independent voice of independent baseball. Unfortunately, we couldn't make our schedules work out this time, but he has spoken with a lot of folks in the know within the Pioneer League and ownership groups and shared a ton of notes with me. So with that in mind, let's try to figure out just how exactly this could play out between the Oakland Ballers and the Pioneer League, as well as some of the curiosities involved. You should welcome me back. You want a ball till you fall, I can help you with that. You Let's begin by discussing the Pioneer League for a little bit. Some out there may even be familiar with the name. It was once part of the minor league baseball pyramid in America, but was contracted as part of that unfortunate reorganization in 2020. According to Indie Ball Nation, it is perhaps the most uniquely positioned of all four independent baseball leagues currently operating stateside. Its former status as part of the minor league baseball structure meant it received compensation when it was contracted out of the fold. These days, the Pioneer League has a chip on its shoulders as it wants to prove it can be a viable baseball league. Beyond that, the financial windfall from contraction has meant it's able to take a few more risks than other independent leagues out there right now. With that in mind, there are certainly some risks involved with the Pioneer League expanding into Northern California this season. Not so much in terms of growing the league's footprint, which is already pretty wide when you look at a map of the Pioneer League. Indie Ball Nation noted that this expansion was made more with attention and headlines in mind, and perhaps not enough attention was spent by the league assessing the risks, expenses, and financials involved when it comes to expanding into California. I'd also add the rushed expansion here has done the Pioneer League very little in terms of gaining exposure or coverage that it perhaps hoped to receive. Most of the coverage related to the Ballers has been involved sort of on the team itself. Very little has gone towards the league, the teams, what it's all about, any of that stuff. You would be hard pressed to know just who the Ballers are going to be playing this season and what the Pioneer League is about. It's kind of just flown under the radar. Are the Ballers a franchise in the Pioneer League or are they a baseball team created solely out of spite? In reality, it's probably a little bit of both, but it does feel like a lot of the attention paid to the club has gone towards the spite angle. That's a bit of a shame because the Pioneer League does have some really interesting selling points as far as the teams, the leagues, just what people can expect from games once they begin, but that has not been a priority to promote like at all. That brings us to one of the more curious aspects of the relationship between the Ballers as well as the High Wheelers and the Pioneer League. During his research into this topic, Indie Ball Nation uncovered the fact that the two teams only have a one year agreement in place with the Pioneer League. In other words, either side can walk away after this season ends. For all of this talk from the Ballers co-founders about how they're local and they're committed to the community and all of that nice flowery language, you would have liked to have seen a little more tangible commitment from them. When you investigate this a little further though, well things get even more just puzzling to say the least, but before I talk about that, there is something I do want to stress here. I want the Oakland Ballers and the YOLO High Wheelers to succeed. I want the entire Pioneer League to succeed. I know there are lots of hardworking, dedicated individuals out there trying to make these things viable. In the case of the Ballers, you look at the coaching staff, the players, the volunteers, those who have supported the club since first launching, and you see a lot of folks out there committed to making this club a real success and something the community can be proud of. 
I have the utmost respect of those individuals who are doing this out of a place of love and a place of caring for baseball, for the community, and all of that. I am less optimistic about the true intentions of Ballers co-founders Paul Friedman and Brian Carmel. The team's launch, the timing of it, it felt I guess you could say opportunistic, almost bordering on predatory as far as preying on the feelings and emotions of A's fans at that moment in time. To that extent, the truncated timeline to get the Ballers franchise up and running is a point of concern. According to Indie Ball Nation, Pioneer League expansion teams need about a year or so to set up. The Ballers have tried to cram everything into a six month window. It's certainly less than ideal. The big question here, though, is why the rush to play in 2024? Friedman and Carmel could have easily made that announcement in November of last year and then began play in 2025. Now, some will say a sense of urgency was needed to tap into the emotions or desire for action in Oakland. Maybe, or maybe there is an ulterior motive behind what Friedman and Carmel are doing. Something like, I don't know, say, filming a TV pilot or documentary that they hope to sell down the line. No one is exactly sure about what the project entails just yet, but several Pioneer League sources, both in the league office and ownership groups, have told Indie Ball Nation that they were approached by the Ballers to participate in something he's working about covering Oakland, the A's, and the Ballers. Additionally, there is a greater concern in the league about the intentions of Carmel and Friedman. Why the rush to get this franchise off the ground in 2024 if you're in it for the long haul? Why are you asking people to be in a documentary about a team that hasn't even played a game yet? Those are questions that certainly need to be answered and I don't think they have. Beyond that though, the one thing I come back to is why would anyone just blindly trust these two individuals? One who has accumulated wealth in one of the dodgiest tech sectors imaginable and the other with ties to media groups and a desire to produce new content. While what they have said throughout the entire process sounds great, it makes everyone feel all warm and fuzzy inside, I don't know if truly difficult questions have been asked of them. For me, what we have here are two Silicon Valley tech bros who are happy to say and do whatever it takes to get that investment money, and then they just go off and do whatever the hell they want until that money runs out. I'm not saying this is what's happening, but I do think that there is some smoke here that needs to be checked out before it just rages into a huge fire. Anyone who has watched this channel for any amount of time knows my own feelings on the terribleness of John Fisher as well as the ludicrous nature of the A's relocation to Las Vegas. But there seems to be some potential awfulness coming from the co-founders of the Ballers. They're not exactly operating in the most upstanding fashion. Allegedly creating a baseball team to use as a plot device in your documentary or TV pilot or whatever the hell it is you're doing is a bullshit move, especially when you are being backed and supported and you're asking members of Oakland to support this team by appealing to community. A community that has been dragged through the mud by the other baseball team in town. At the moment, there is nothing stopping this duo from dipping out after the Ballers' first season. Let's say that documentary doesn't get picked up, that TV show doesn't get picked up, they can easily skip out of town. That's the joy of a one-year agreement with the Pioneer League. One thing Indie Ball Nation did stress is that the Ballers team has done a good job of getting renovations to Ramonde Park done. To a certain extent, I agree with that sentiment. It has been impressive to see the park renovated for baseball. However, most of their efforts were going hat in hand to the local community asking for more donations. It wasn't them putting up the money, it was them receiving the money from others. Perhaps I would be less skeptical if they had a better pitch. In addition to talking about their documentary slash television series, those working for the Ballers keep reaching on this terrible analogy that they will be a buttoned up version of the Savannah Bananas. Apart from the analogy being formed as if it was some sort of bizarre SAT question, it doesn't really work on any level. All the Ballers are doing here is putting their logo next to the logo of three successful brands and saying, that's us if you give us the money. It is a classic page out of the crappy startup funding playbook. Paul Friedman and Brian Carmel claim to be A's fans like everyone else. Well, real A's fans wouldn't be doing shady things in the background while selling the public a false narrative. That is exactly what Fisher and Dave Cavill did when they talked about being rooted in Oakland only to uproot the team last year. Friedman and Carmel want to think they're better than those two, but right now, as it stands, 
I don't know if they are. I know that there are going to be people out there who dismiss this video and dismiss me as simply hating on the ballers and wanting to see them fail. And you know what? That couldn't be further from the truth. I want to see them succeed. I want to see independent baseball work in Oakland, in YOLO, wherever the case may be. But what I do not want to see is a pair of fools come in, start a team, have it flame out, and then see those co-founders scurry along their merry way. To that extent, Friedman and Carmel, if you're truly committed, if you're truly in it for the long haul, why don't you prove it? Why don't you show it to Oakland? Anyone can speak empty platitudes about community. I think you need to show you are actually committed. And by the way, while you're at it, maybe put that documentary or TV pilot on ice until the end of the regular season. I mean, the team should come first, no? When I asked Indie Ball Nation about what long-term success could look like for the Ballers, he mentioned how the team has a lot of early enthusiasm from the fan base, and the goal is going to be keep that going. If it can keep this enthusiasm up, it will eventually find long-term success. That brought me back to the defunct Sacramento Steelheads, a franchise that came to the city with a lot of early hope and excitement and just sort of fizzled out. Those Steelheads ended the city's two-decade baseball drought, but honestly, the idea of independent baseball was better than the reality of it. The team would leave town the following season when AAA moved in. The latter may not be a concern for Oakland, but dwindling enthusiasm after the first month or so should be a real point of worry for those running the franchise. Right now, people love the idea of alternative baseball in the city. It seems fun, it's nice, it's cool, whatever you want to call it, but does that love, does that admiration stick around once games actually begin, once it's time to get into the grind or the slog or whatever you want to call it? It's possible, but those efforts start with the team's co-founders focusing on the success of the franchise and not using the club to pursue their own personal projects. At the end of the day, I would love for the Oakland Ballers and the YOLO High Wheelers to be a success, and I would like it to be a springboard for more independent baseball in Northern California, but there are some red flags surrounding the Ballers co-founders that need to be addressed, because if they bail out of town when that documentary doesn't get picked up at the end of the season, it's going to be a huge issue. Finally, I need to extend my thanks and my gratitude to Indie Ball Nation for doing a lot of research and really helping me investigate this topic. Like I said at the start of the video, definitely check out his channel if you want any information on the independent baseball scene across the United States. You can find the link to his channel and his website in the video description below. Thank you for watching this video. If you'd like to know more about the weird ways owners will pit fan bases against each other in sports relocation attempts, well, video upper right-hand corner of your screen is the place to go. Until next time, I'm Shine Hollis. This is The Touchback, and as always, hashtag take it out to the 25.